there. This is Pussy Empowered Podcast, and I'm your host, Alyssa Aparicio. I'm equal parts Bronx bitch and mountain witch. I believe that when you untame your pussy, you access your power. As a pussy empowerment coach, I teach women how to do this with a holistic approach that incorporates mind, body, emotion, and spirit. As a sacred erotic creatrix, I surrender to new heights of embodied, expressed art, and performance myself. On this podcast, I share about my approach to pussy power and interview fellow paradigm-shifting badasses about theirs. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I'm so, so nice happy. To meet you. I know. So nice to meet you. I feel like I know you, uh, and we've never really had a one-on-one conversation, so I'm really excited for this chance I know it was like I normally do these on Fridays but I was like all my Fridays are booked but I need to talk to you Parrish thank you so (laughs) much for doing that and making the time I I felt felt so deeply magnetized yeah Yeah. so let me tell if you haven't um, met Parrish by now or if you don't know her she is a sex goddess and master manifester and also, you're responsible for a documentary uh, called, it's called Love Affair Tour Documentary. And that sounds amazing. I'm, I'm looking forward to talking more about that. And also, you're the executive producer of Sexy Spirit TV. But also, Juicy, I love all of these titles. They're, they fit you so beautifully. Um, and of course, I know that you're unlimited being, so you're even more than these titles can, can hold. But thank you for love taking that. the time to be here. <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, that's Corinne La Porfido's art, Pussy Power. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so thank you for being here. And actually, I'm just gonna take one second to snap this on. Okay. Yeah, we're charging now. Um. So, Parish, I think that most obvious, most um, yeah, the most obvious thing when anyone sees you or goes to your page or finds your work, is just this deep rootedness and comfort in your body in your sexuality in your relationship to to source and and that existing in your body and that's what i see when i see you and and receiving your receiving your words and experiences um in where i first came across you in in lizzie jeff's stimulated workshops uh you know over the course of a couple a couple of different times i was in your and i just felt in your presence didn't know that you there. <laughs> I was there. Yeah, I was there um, this time and back in, a couple months ago. Yeah, I don't remember that. what month it was. And I just felt like witnessing you and the level of comfort and rootedness that you have in your body just allows my nervous system to relax too. Whenever I see you, I just feel myself like <sighs> melt. So that is such powerful medicine. I don't know, you know, just by you showing up. And then there's so much that you share about that's just so next level. So thanks for taking the time to be here to share it with us. Well, thank you so much, Alyssa, for all the beautiful words. But I have to tell you that when I look at you, I feel the exact same thing. Like the, mm. the, where you're looking at me saying those things, that's exactly what I feel about you. Mm. And, uh, and the common denominator of Lizzie Jeff, you know, connecting us is all about our, our vibe attracts our tribe. So I'm not, and I'm not just deflecting the compliment, you know, like saying, oh, I'm your reflection of you. And <laughs> because mm-hmm. I, I say that a lot to sisters, but the sisters that I am manifesting into my reality are a reflection of me. And mm-hmm. so my, my deep care and concern, not out of fear, it's evolving out of fear, which I'm very gl- glad about. It's more in the power. But my deepest concern is that the younger sisters that are identifying as sex goddesses are, you know, taking, I mean, there, you are the, you're the cutting edge of the reality that I'll never see, you know, Mm -hmm. and you're influencing, you will be influencers of my great grandchildren. And so putting all of the, the, the important um, and necessary conversations into your psyche are, are everything. It has everything to do with healing the planet. So you, you know, taking on your Brown brothers and sisters and, 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 you know, just speaking up for the whole world, the way that you're doing is, you know, it's reverberating into our reality that, you know, even you won't ever be able to live. So mm-hmm. it's like our thoughts create things, whatever we speak about, we're bringing about. So I'm always going to connect that whether people think it's sexy or popular or realistic, 
I'm always going to connect the reality that I'm living, whatever I think about, I bring about. And that folds perfectly in with my sexuality. And I'm here to, you know, explain and show how. Mm. <laughs> that just lands right in my heart. Thank you so much for everything you shared. And, and thank you for paving the way with the work that you do. And it's, it's setting the example of the future looking so bright. <laughs> thank you for embodying that. And I want to start with the question of just, I know that in this society that we have inherited, you don't just, I mean, maybe you arrive this way, but there is some, there is a process of coming back to your inherent power and claiming your relationship with your body and I just want to know what that journey has been like for you the journey to be able to claim yourself as a sex goddess in this in this world that is so puritanical and you know all the isms that come along with the, the world that we've inherited here but what has your personal journey of reclamation and um, what did it did you feel this from when you were a young girl um, and, you know can you just share a little bit about what that that process has been like? The, it really has been a journey, so it's too lengthy to talk about every every pivotal every pivotal point that really made a big difference. But it really showed up in my body. the The earliest that I remember, I was three years old, and I remember something didn't feel. I can't say that it didn't feel right because something felt good, but I knew something was wrong because my mother wasn't there. And I, I saw her boyfriend in a bathtub with a woman that looked like my mom. She had a big afro like my mom, and she was brown like my mom. But somehow I knew that's not my mom. And they were listening to music, and he was getting in the tub with her. And I was just kind of sneaking and looking in the bathroom. And I remember thinking, and I know I was little, so I, don't, I know I didn't have the word, but that looks beautiful or that feels sexy. I don't know how to explain it, but I knew that's not good that my mom's not there. And I didn't know how to match that up. But the, the way that I knew that it was good is how I found out a, a, about good things several times throughout my life. It's because I felt it in my vagina. I was only three. I don't know how to explain it in words. I just knew that feeling that I had inside of my vagina meant that something was good. And I also knew that when something was happening where I felt like I had to pee and that was usually connected to my clit. You know, probably my inner clit was what I was feeling. I thought I had to pee. I thought when I got nervous or I was going to get in trouble or something like that, that, you know, I'm getting so nervous. I'm going to pee on myself. I didn't know that I was having um, like spontaneous orgasms that were triggered by stress that I started having those really young. They weren't mm -hmm. debilitating or so frequent, like they were, you know, noticeable, but I knew sometimes I even got spanked for it. If my mother said, give me a report card. I know you're lying about your grades. That's not true. And I'm like, Oh God, she found out about it. And, I, and then she's like, go get the belt. Oh my gosh. I, oh, I can't stand that. <laughs> when parents used to beat their kids and things like that to teach them. And I remember feeling like this is like the worst feeling ever. I have to go get the thing she's going to beat me with. And mm -hmm. then just the anticipation of, of her saying, hurry up, you're going to hurry up or you're going to get it worse. And I'm trying to find the belt that she thinks is going to hurt me the most. And I remember my, my, now I know this back then I didn't. Now I know my clit started, started throbbing. My vagina started throbbing and I felt like I was going to pee on myself. And I was like, I'm going to pee. I'm going to pee. And she was like, you don't have to pee. Go get the belt. <laughs> and I literally thought I was going to pee on myself. Like my legs were shaking and everything. And then, and she was like, if you don't go in there and pee, when you come out, I'm going to beat you worse. And she ended up beating me worse because I didn't pee, but it took me until I was about 20 years old talking to mm -hmm. another woman who had spontaneous uh, stress orgasms and, and her explaining it. And I'm like, that's exactly what I've been experiencing. And she goes, that's, and she showed me like articles about it. And I wasn't that interested in reading about it because it didn't happen as often for me, but it gave me some kind of peace because I'm like, I knew something was happening down there. I didn't know what to call it back then. And even though I'm in this body and that it's the same body that it was happening to me back then, it didn't feel the same, you know, it felt different. So I've known that sexuality is a part of, of the world giving me feedback for a long time uh, through my sexuality. I just didn't know what to call it. I didn't know how to feel good about it. I didn't know how to talk about it to other people. 
and I didn't know how to go this extra step that I felt like something invisible is kind of drawing me to, but I can't really talk about it because I don't know if people understand. So it was there the whole time, but I just didn't know how to embrace it. Mm. Wow. Oh, that is so, I know how, so many, how many people are going to resonate with that and myself included, just this feeling of a, a deeper knowing ever since I was a child that there's just something really powerful happening here that nobody's talking about. <laughs> like nobody's talking, it seems to be this big secret. And so I'm going to just not talk about it until, you know, until the point came where it is all I talk about now. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, and there was talk about it. Now there was talk about sex and sexuality around me, but it was conflicting. It was like, you know, my mother would tell me like, get that lollipop out of your mouth. Stop licking that. Put the ice cream in, in a cup and don't drink out. Don't, you know, lick it off of an ice cream cone. And I was wondering like, why? That's like the most fun part, <laughs> you know, like licking it and, you know, sucking on the lollipop like all the other kids. So it made me feel like something's bad about me because she would basically say, those dirty old men are standing over there watching you. Stop licking that. Or she'd say, don't bend over like that. And I'm like, you know, I started like being very self-conscious because she thought she was explaining to me, I'm trying to protect you from someone sexually assaulting you, you know, uh, behave this way so that you won't be a victim. She thought she was clearly explaining that, but she was just scaring the shit out of me. Where I then when things did happen, when I was sexually assaulted or, or, or uh, molested, I never said anything, even though she's like, you always tell me. But I didn't because the way she was talking about it, it made me afraid, even though she was trying to protect me. And then mm -hmm. even when I saw like Diana Ross and Donna Summers, they had on these sexy low cut things like I'm wearing right now. <laughs> but when I was little, it was like, if it was on TV, it was good. If it was a woman that my mother or my aunt were jealous of, it was bad. Um, it, it was just mixed up. I didn't understand because I really had a pure vibration. Like I didn't, I didn't understand the bad part. I just knew that it existed. Mm -hmm. And so now, like you said, you know, fast forward into the, the lives that we're living. And now that little girl that had all those mixed up vibrations and I knew what sexy was, but I didn't know why I did. And I knew I better not act like I know and all those kind of things. But now it's like, I'm totally free. I get to fully express myself. Mm -hmm. So that's what you're saying. It's like, nobody's the boss of me. I don't get spent anymore unless I ask for it. And you know, like, it's like, it's all good. I don't have to dwell in the mire of all of the resistance that I had to go through to validate where I'm at right now. I'm right here right mm -hmm. now because I deserve to be here the entire time. And, and I figured it out in enough time to still live a good life and share this good life with others. So that's, that's really where my power is. Mm. Just, I'm just basking in everything you just said. You said the words, now I'm totally free. And that just feels like the heavens opening up to hear, to hear you say that, to hear you, that come out of your mouth is such, I mean, how often do you hear anybody claim that so radiantly and so and with such depth of truth you know so thank you for saying those words and sharing a bit about that journey and wow so I think what comes naturally from that chair is the question of how have you strengthen this relationship with your sexual energy and with your with your pussy um what has that process of of embodiment been like for you or what does that look like for you on a what it looks basis? like for me is is it all this has happened in a, the most dramatic way there were big steps that happened along the way i left religion that was a big thing um, like almost 20 years ago, I, I left religion. I used to be a Jehovah's Witness. I left materialism and decided that if I make money, I want to make money doing the things that I love um, so that I'm just living my life and I somehow get paid. I didn't know how that was going to happen, but I just knew I don't want to work ever again. I just want, I worked my ass off for things that meant nothing to me. And every day I wanted to kill myself because I was living a life that was a lie. And I didn't, I didn't, 
connect with the religion that I was in. I didn't connect with the husband I had. I wasn't even connecting with my children. I had them at home. I nursed them until one, my oldest son, until he was three. I was doing all the things I wanted to do, but I couldn't feel it. And so I, I decided to just like do a reset. Um, I, unfortunately, I had to go to the darkest side in order to find the light, which has happened twice in my life. The first time is when I attempted to kill myself and I was rescued. And when I was rescued and I was able to breathe fresh air, I'd barricaded myself from the inside in my garages and pushed the motorcycle in front of the door and locked it. And I just turned on all the cars and was hoping I could go to sleep and just, you know, you know, a cowardly way out. I just, it was seemed like life was too painful, but I couldn't cut myself or I was afraid. What if I take pills and I don't swallow them or, and you know, they don't stay down. I, I just want to go to sleep. So mm -hmm. somehow, there was a friend of mine who into her intuitions, like it perishes and at work, something's wrong. And she thought I was going to leave my husband at the time. And I ended up, you know, sending my older, uh, my stepdaughter away with my kids and told her to take them to the park and go have breakfast. And, and I was going to stay home and, and sleep. And, and that alerted my friend. She's like, no, something's wrong. She would never do that. And she ended up convincing my husband to go home and they realized they thought, Oh, she's gone. She went somewhere. But I was in the garage the whole time. So when they broke the, open a door and rescued me, I knew I don't want to die. I want this life to die. And I just don't know mm. how. I don't know how to. I feel like I can't stop because then I got to I got to pay the bills or my family can't be, you know, you know, have a good life. And I, I got to keep going to the kingdom hall and acting like I'm a good Jehovah's Witness because everybody's encouraged by me. And I've got to keep doing all these services to these people because they're relying on me. But I was like, what do I want to do? I just want to stay home. <laughs> like I just, I want to be home. I want to read books. I want to, you know, explore reflexology. I wanted to do things that other people thought, you know, that's bullshit. That's nothing. Do that on your spare time. That's what I wanted to do all the time. So I gave away everything. Um, I, I left the religion and I lived in my car. I gave my husband everything because I knew money was important to him. That's why we were living that way. And I didn't want to fight. So I just decided I'll, I'll just start all over again. And when I started all over again, I started by reading the books about how things are really put together through energy. And I didn't know about the sexual energy. I just, that was just something I was naturally kind of doing in a weird way, but I didn't, I didn't, you know, read about it. Um, it. The second time I had a reset was when I went in for a hysterectomy. It was an emergency hysterectomy. I was bleeding to death because of all of the life I lived, living for everybody else, standing on my feet, working all the time, not taking care of myself, not having maternity leave, any of those things. Years later, it culminated into my womb, you know, giving me signs that there's something off. My, my periods are lasting way too long. The pads, like in a couple of hours, I'm overflowing. This isn't natural. And I had tampons in at the same time. So uh, it was really bad. And I talked to my gynecologist about it. And she was like, you might want to consider a hysterectomy in the future, but let's try birth control. Let's try these things. And I tried all those things. And then one day I went in for my Wellman's visit and she told me that to, she had the doctor's office call me to tell me she's going to the hospital to meet me. And I have to have an emergency hysterectomy. The labs came back and I have no blood in my body. If I, mm -hmm. if I went to bed, I would have a seizure. And so I went in and had the hysterectomy and because of uh, internal bleeding, there were complications and I had two other surgeries. And because I really had no blood in my body to begin with, that third surgery, I tasted death and mm. I was able to remember everything that happened when I died. And when I came back to life, it changed everything, everything, all the things that it changed me before when I left religion and I was like, okay, I'm going to be free. I don't care. I'm going to be outside the box. But I still was kind of, I was outside the, I was inside the box. It just had windows, <laughs> you know, I still wasn't doing it all the way. But when I had that death experience and I came back, it was like something about that. You know, have you seen people that they survive, you know, a disease or the a car accident, even if they're they're missing a limb or something. They, they live more life afterwards than they did before, mm -hmm. or it, maybe their beauty was a big thing for them. And then their beauty's gone and they're making major trans transformations in the world where they thought the beauty was everything. So for me, it was, you know, really impactful to be outside of my body and looking at myself that that's never happened to me. And my eyes were closed and I'm like, how are, how am I seeing myself? My eye, where are my eyes? 
as soon as I asked where my eyes were, I was a part of everything. I was light. I was love. I was a vibration that felt like a song that I was the words or the mute. I don't even know how to say it, Alyssa. It just, I, I mess it up every time. I just knew that if I just kept finding that frequency and staying with it, that I was expanding. And if I didn't stop, I would never find my body. And then I knew I wanted to live longer and be with my children longer. And then this intelligence downloaded on me and told me the reason why my womb was sacrificed is because I won't give birth. I keep getting all these inspirations and I love everybody else and hope everybody else dreams before my own. And that inner guidance keeps trying to guide me, but I won't listen to it that I, I second guess it or I ignore it or I ask for validation outside of me. And then it told me that if I just loved myself first, that everything would, would have been different for me. And so I was like, if I could just live again and love my kids and be healthy and feel beautiful inside and out, I want to live the life of my dreams. And I woke back up in my body. They took the vent out of me that was in me. And I just started writing down everything that it told me. And my husband threw the paper away. And I thought, if I don't write it down, I won't remember. You know, I, I, I didn't, I'd never had an experience like that before. But I just started doing that. And one thing led to the other, led to the other, to now that I'm talking to you. But where all those titles or titles that I had to come up with, just being completely transparent with you, Alyssa, the titles, the executive producer, the da-da-da-da, I had to make that up so that I could tell people who I am when I end up going on this cruise to tell the world this that I didn't even know was going to happen. You know, I didn't make the words up, but you know, my sponsor basically like, well, you're basically creating all your content. You're the executive producer. Put that down. Okay. And you're doing this and you're doing that. The only thing I knew is I'm a master manifester and I'm a sex goddess. I don't know if people are going to pay me for that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if they believe me or if they want to even know what I'm doing to be considered that. But that's how my tour started. It was really me following inner guidance going on social media, telling the world in a video that this is what I do. I masturbate and talk to God. And then after I did orgasmic gratitude meditation, two weeks later, a woman who owned this company saw my, my video and asked me, is this true? And I told her, yeah. And she's like, where are you going to go on this tour that you're going to do? And I told her, I don't know. It just says Parrish Blair love affair tour. So I just, I guess I'm going to go where my family is and I'm going to hug people and give them flowers. I honestly don't know. I literally didn't know anything. And then she was like, I got to figure out how I can help you. I got to tell you more about my company. I'll call you back. And she called me back and said, look, I own this online sex company. We have sex toys, lubes, everything's organic, eco-friendly. I travel the world with swingers and open lifestyle people. You're going to do a love documentary. I would love it if people would do a, more stories about how we really love and, and why, why this community is so powerful. And she goes, what if I could sponsor your tour? Could you go to Spain? Could you go to here? Can you go there? Can you go? And I was like, uh, 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 yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> I, I was thinking all I did was masturbate and think about it. I don't have business cards. I don't have a website. I wasn't even trying. I, I didn't have enough time to try. She, I just did what the voice told me to do. So I know I'm rambling a little bit, but I'm just getting it all out to all the sisters mm -hmm. and the brothers that are watching or however you identify that voice that you said, something told me to do that. That's the voice that's leading you to the life of your dreams. It might not seem like it. It didn't seem like it to me. When it told me, go on Facebook and tell the world you masturbate and talk to God, I thought it was a demon. I'm like, why is it telling me to do this? My ex-husband's going to get mad at me. What are my kids going to say? But I didn't know. It's saying, you got to get out there so she can see your video, so you could travel the world, so you could fulfill Parrish Blair love affair. It's already figured out. Get your head out of it. Don't try to make sense of it. Follow your gut. You know it's your gut when it's in your body. When it's in your head, it could be a mix of everything. But when you learned how to get in your body, you'll always win. You'll always go where you want to go. Damn, that was, a <laughs> that that was, was uh, I mean, the level of honesty and vulnerability oh. and self-fucking-trust in that story. And it's so, I think it's so important for so many people to hear, too, because we see now the not the finished project product because you're always evolving we see this version of you and you know people see versions of people as they are right now but they don't understand what it took to get there and and it's not always just you know rainbows and flowers that you just show up one day and you're, you're always 
you know, on that highest vibration. And so for you to share that, I know everyone listening is in a different part of their path and their journey. And I know how impactful it is to hear, to hear what you just shared. So thank you. And for the, the permission to follow that inner guidance, that is huge. That is everything I think. And yeah, that's what I really feel passionate about when it comes to pussy power. It's like owning that for yourself, figuring out what that means to you and listening to that inner voice. It's not modeling some external version of that. It's like, and there's so many layers of, there's so many layers that it takes to remove to get to that depth of truth. But once you're there and you know it, once you've experienced it in your body, like um, Audre Lorde shares in her uses of the erotic as power, it's like once you experience that, you know that nothing less than that is for you. It, nothing less than that can be, you know, acceptable for the life that, for, for a life of, um, the life that you deserve. And, and so that's something that, you know, one of my, I have like nine elements of pussy power. And one of them that I share about is living rapturously. And that's all about like not accepting the crumbs, the crumbs and like the leftovers that a lot of the times as women, we just, you know, we, we have lived these limiting beliefs, whether they come from us, whether it's nature or nurture, right? And a lot of the nurture turns into nature as it's passed down through generations. Um, but, but yeah, what I see you doing is claiming and owning your desires and owning the life that, that you just know is meant for you. And I want to talk about that. Um, I was wondering if I could tell you something else that I'm doing. Yes, please. While I'm doing all the things that you just said, yeah. I am unapologetically in, in, in all forms that you could think about it, appreciating men along the way. Because to me, mm. what the, I'm hearing very strong messages from my sex goddess community and enlightened wild women that are, you know, giving all of us the permission to continue on this free spirited path. But in a lot of the pockets of where all this empowerment is happening, I'm also hearing very clear conversation about the male part in our our uh, resistance and the male part in our disempowerment and i'm not going to negate that however the that the the other part of me kicks in which is the manifester and it's like okay so if thoughts create things and we, the only way we can experience something is if we're a match when it's good things when i'm on tour and i, I get an ebony magazine it's like oh my god look at what i manifested if it's somebody that disrespects me or sexually harasses me, then it's like, oh no, it doesn't, that doesn't count <laughs> because of the patriarchy, we're on something else right now. I, I can't do that or all of my stuff is bullshit, you know? So I had to find that vibration of, for me to be the sexually empowered woman that I wanna be, I love women too, but I, I have more of my orientation to sexuality with masculine energy. So that's a, still a big part of my sexual expression. But if I think they're all jerks and that all they want to do is control me, manipulate me, use me and abuse me, well, then what, why fucking have sexual freedom for me, you know, if I want to enjoy men. So I have to be able to reconcile that. What is that about? And so the first thing is just starting from right here, right now, if we really want to manifest the kind of men that we want in our reality, those are the men we need to be talking about. Those are the men we need to be posting about. Those are the men we need to be giving conversations to. The more we give men, men attention that really are lower than what we really want to experience or that we've outgrown them. We feel like they're holding us back because they, we're on this thing and they don't get it. That's not really the case. Literally, their love, their, their masculine energy, their dick, whatever it is they gave you, helped you get where you're going. And now you don't need that anymore. You need something else. It's not their journey to go all the way. So you gotta go, you gotta go that way without them having to be the villain. You know, if you can only be the victor, somebody's the villain, there's always gonna be that there. And I'm and I'm I've been a victim of sexual assault, 
molestation, sexual harassment, all the things, all the things. <laughs> so this is not a woman who doesn't, who hasn't gone through something, who's saying she adores men and wants to, you know, love and heal them. This is a woman who knows that it all has to be encompassed if you're a goddess. Everything came from the pussy. So if men are out of control, we're the mamas. <laughs> we're supposed to be able to know how to do that. And if we don't know how to do that, the magic is within us and it's coming out through leaders you and, and Lizzie and so many other people who are, you know, thought leaders and, you know, how to heal the womb and, uh, and let go of the, the pain and suffering that we've locked inside the womb. And that helps us be more of a match for the men that we desire. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Are you there, Alyssa? Yeah, I'm here. Yes. Oh, okay. I was just mm -hmm. going to town. Could you hear me? Or see me? Yeah, I could hear everything you said. I heard everything you said. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, I want to say that because I watch a lot of your um, broadcasts, and I, I am totally, I am totally in alignment with the things that you talk about. Like totally, I've been watching a lot of them to see. Let's mm -hmm. see if there's anything that maybe I'm not aligned with, alignment with, but there isn't anything. But mm -hmm. I, I've also seen that a lot of the the conversation because of care of women and all the love and support we need tends to lean towards more negative things being said about men than all of the amazing things that we adore about them mm -hmm. and talking about the delicious relationships that we, we appreciate and the men that, you know, just for no reason treated us like goddesses and made sure we made it to our destination safely. And like, we don't have conversations like that a lot mm -hmm. publicly, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that that's important too, because there's, hundreds and thousands of men that we connect with who are nothing like the men that we're uh, in opposition to, you know, when it comes to, you know, abuse and, and all of the misogyny and everything out there. But because we're always talking about that, we're assuming that we've got to protect ourselves from these kind of men. And then we project that into other relationships. And then I end up working with those men <laughs> in sessions. And I realize like, wow, I now, this is a consistent thing. I see that, you know, some men are, are they're victims of, of abuse, you know, by women, neglect by women, all those things, but they can't talk about it because they'll be weak and they can't talk about it because that's just being a guy, you know, women are always right. And well, you know how they are on their the time of the month, she'll throw things at me. And it's like, okay, wait a minute. If a guy's like, you know, I get stressed at the end of the month with, you know, taxes and everything. I throw shit and I get upset. But you know how I am. That's abuse. <laughs> so mm -hmm. just helping sisters see whatever we put out, we get back. So the same, the same, um, the same boundaries that we have that we want respected. We got to go through and see how how am I, you know, a match for that thing that I don't want, you know. And sometimes you might see that that is, you know, that is in you only because we were conditioned. You know, men are supposed to serve us. They're, they want this pussy. Do what you got to do. <laughs> you know, like, but that's not, you know, I'm just saying that that's not completely balanced. And the good men, you know, the men that are up for the fight, why would you want them anyway? But the good men that want to worship you anyway, they don't want to hear, they don't want to hear those words. They don't actually like to be talked about or talked to that way. And, but they don't know how to say it <laughs> because there's no space for them. So I would love to see some of the sex goddesses you know, bring that voice out publicly so that women know where to find the men that they don't have to teach and fuss at and make do something. They're men that lovingly, openly want to do that. And so I, I'm not coddling men, you know, who are abusive or any of those things. I'm talking about the men that are nothing like that. And they deserve, they deserve attention because whatever we put our attention on is what we're going to get. Mm. I'm so glad that you present this in the conversation because it's something I've been thinking a lot about as well. And hearing you speak to it stimulated was something that that spurred more thought as well. And I like to be upfront about the fact that I'm not a relationship coach by any means. Mm -hmm. What I know deeply is the relationship of grounding into mm -hmm. one's own pussy and one's own authentic expression. But, you know, I see, I mean, I think that these, you're right that this has to go hand in hand. That it's not, you can't just, you know, I think I would love to see more 
more men doing doing the inner work and doing the the you know spiritual healing and I don't I don't see that as much they are yeah if you're giving it attention like right now I'm telling you I I connect with thousands of them <laughs> so they're they are doing that but we're still looking at the men like we got to do something about those men if we stop fucking with them and manifesting them we don't mm. and mm. and the the power like the true power the true power of the vagina is magical it's alchemy it's real i'm living it i didn't create any of these things with anything other than sexual energy mm. so we collectively as women if we haven't completely finish processing our pain, but we're starting a movement of empowerment that's only one-sided in certain areas, then that's not going to be healthy long-term. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like if men were like, our deficit is all, you know, the women are the biggest consumer and all of us men are in debt because of women <laughs> and we got to do something about these women. <laughs> and it's like, wait a minute now, some of us, yeah, we're spending too much, you know, but not all of us. You know, there's some women who know how to balance money and who know that, like, we can't put everything one way because there's a lot of emotion and everybody's got posters and there's T-shirts with it on it now. Whatever mm -hmm. we put out, we're going to get. It can make us feel good right now in the 2020s, <laughs> but 2040s and 2050s when you realize, oh, shit, we were saying savage all those years. We were saying all the things, men are simps and, geez, look at how, look at how crappy men are now. We kind of spoke mm -hmm. that shit into existence, didn't we? We have the power. Mm -hmm. Not that we can make men a certain way, but you can create a whole world. The reason why I have sexual freedom everywhere and blessings and magical things flying out of my vagina <laughs> is because I talk about it and I believe it and I live it every day. So if we're not ah. living the masculine energy we want to live every day, we're not celebrating how amazingly delicious penises are, if you love them and that's what you like. I'm, I'm not talking to people who don't identify that way. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get better with my language and making it inclusive, but I'm, I'm literally talking about penis owners and those who love them. <laughs> mm. So penis owners mm -hmm. and those who love them. If you're thinking about how magically and miraculously they're made, you know, and that they're made to give vaginas pleasure and that there's this whole body attached to it. It's not just a penis there. There's a heart and there's, all of these amazing things about masculine energy that are seekingly seeking and desire you. And it's so wonderful. I'm not talking about the, the, the image that society has painted of men, but the real men, they love women in all shapes and sizes. They don't care if we're bald headed. They don't care if we got one ear missing. They don't care. They don't care. They just love women. They just adore women. They want to defend men, women. They want, you know, to protect women. They want women to be safe. They want women to know that they're their brothers, you know, that the men are their brothers first before they're the man that wants to have sex with them. Like real men, good men, young men. Most of the men that I'm connecting with are not men my age. They're men your age and younger. So that's, that's like, it's, that's why I'm saying the more you speak about them, the more you'll bring them about. They're already there. Mm. You, you just have to bring them about. Mm. That's beautiful. It's beautiful to hear you say that, that, that there's more that there are a lot of men doing this work and yeah my attention has not been on men my attention has been on on women healing themselves and i have a beautiful man in my life my my love of seven years and Bless i just you. and i i appreciate you you saying that and i also i, I wonder do you think it's do you think it's critical for everyone teaching about women and women's empowerment to address that to address the men with them i'm 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 coming with love saying sisters i know i'm not the only one you know i know there's other sisters and brothers out there doing it but the sisters that i'm talking to that aren't doing it or that i see might put up a meme that you know kind of supports the wave of talking about the guys we really don't want those are the mm. ones that i'm targeting just to see mm -hmm. if that resonates with you. If it doesn't, then it's going to get done anyway. But mm. there, but for the women that go through these seminars and they're learning all these amazing things about how their clit is made and how beautiful, you know, their sexual energy is and their breasts and everything. I'm sure the majority of them are have some intention of sharing that with a man. Mm. But if they don't have a, a clear frequency 
of what that looks like, they're going to continue to go through the cycle of, I've got all this magic and I can't find any men. And, and that's, mm. and then that'll be reverberated. Like what's the good of even being a sex goddess? Cause you still can't find men. That's not the mm. truth. <laughs> that's mm. not the truth. You know, there, there mm -hmm. are so many amazing men that are available and waiting for wherever they fit in your life. They're not chasing pussy. You know, they're mm -hmm. not, they're not a simp. They're not trying to find women to buy, you know, they're, they know their value. They're like, Hey, yeah, you're the prize, but I am too. <laughs> if you mm -hmm. don't think I'm a prize then I don't want to be with you because I see you're a prize. They have self love, you know, they have self confidence. And they still know how we don't we don't normally see men that have that that still know how to be tender with them in an energy. They're mm -hmm. usually egotistical or arrogant, but with a man that's balanced, it's a beautiful display of now I can follow that. Now the masculine energy that's like, hey, let me lead you here. <laughs> you know, I need to lead you here because I know I'm the one that knows how to do this and you are gonna have to do that and that's gonna take strength. So let me do that first. Like when I heard a man say, should a man lead and a woman follow? I was like, hold up, buddy. I don't like that language. What do you mean should? And then I mm. had to sit and listen to this whole conversation in Clubhouse. And I just muted my mic because I was like, okay, this is making me angry. <sighs> I'm like, I want to cuss and spit. Like, what do you mean should? And don't say that to a goddess. And I was thinking all this stuff. But when I really started listening to what the brothers were saying, first of all, they never even get a chance to say one whole sentence when women are in the room. We cut them off as soon as we don't like it. And we, you know, we say what we want to say and they better not say anything or we'll get mad because they're being, you know, whatever attacking us. So when the men made the women just mute the mic and they said everything they needed to say, a young man basically said, what I mean, I'm not trying to be a jerk. Me and this girl were out at a party. We got in some trouble with the law and they were looking for us and they came in the party looking for us, literally. And he's like, I found a safe place. And I told her, go on the other side and do the same thing I did. Instead, she went under the bed. And he said, so I'm looking down on her, seeing them getting ready to come for her. And then he just starts crying. This is like a strong, young guy who's a rap artist and everything. And he was like, you know, that put me in a situation where it's like women, like they say, protect black women. And then I do the best I can. And it's like they want to, we, we're, we got to do, we got to be a man the way they want to. We got to protect them the way they want to. It's like, do they just, do they want a man or do they want a toy? And then I really got it. And I was like, ah, oh, I get it. <laughs> You know, like we, I'm not saying that they're always right, but we don't even understand their point of view. We don't even, we don't even let them talk about it that much to understand it. We, we know more about men through women who have had pain with men than we do mm -hmm. from actual men. And I just want to encourage more women who are thought leaders to spend more time with men who are thought leaders <laughs> and in, at their vibration and just listen to them speak without judgment, mm -hmm. without interrupting them. Even if you start feeling like that's some bullshit, that's not right. Just hold it. You're going to be able to say it afterwards anyway. Just let them say their whole sentence. And then they'll, and when you say, but that's not the right word, you shouldn't say that. They're like, well, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know the right word, whatever word. But in the mm -hmm. midst of it, you think that asshole, that's, see, that's why I don't like guys like that. You know, mm -hmm. afterwards, if they could just get their thought out, <laughs> they're not like us. Or we can talk over each other and think about three things and five things and do each other's hair and, you know, paint our nails at the same time. They're not that way, but they're not less than we are either. So those are things that are, I'm really passionate about, Alyssa, not to be on a soapbox or talk down to sisters who are teachers. It's just, you know, I think that that would just make the seminar even more, you know, exciting. Like, hey, mm. who are you getting all this feminine energy ready for? You know, if it mm. happens to be masculine energy, there's a component that I think will be valuable because I don't mm. see that in a lot of the seminars, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I also I'm telling men, it's great that you guys are getting together and you know, you're having this camaraderie to talk about your feelings and going out in the woods and hitting drums, but you better get some feminine energy in there <laughs> because mm -hmm. if you guys only get to that vibe with each other, when you get with the feminine energy, you're still not going to know how to do it. So the sexual mm -hmm. synergy is important for both sides. We mm -hmm. need the empowerment. We need the healing on both sides, but we also need the synergy to work together. Mm. Well, consider your message received. I definitely heard everything you said and I will be sitting with that and, and digesting and breathing with that. So thank you for, for being open to bringing that into the conversation. You know, I was watching that video of you um, that I sent you when you were moving your hips and everything. And I told you that it moved me to feel very emotional and I started crying because mm -hmm. there was a part of me that 
when you said you have to do that and not care what it looks like in front of other people. And, you know, I've been on lots of beaches and, you know, I've been on beaches by myself, you know, and I can't get friends to go with me. And I was just thinking about like, you're doing that in front of everyone and there's no, you know, music, there's no dance party happening. You're just moving your hips and bending over and doing what you're doing to feel good in your body. And I remember where I, I started locking my hips and being worried about what people think because I think our body type is, you know, maybe I'm a little bit top heavy, but it's very similar. And so for me, a lot of my brown sisters were built a little bit differently, a little bit more, you know, uh, voluptuously at a very young age. So all of them were like, look at you, you're so, you can't, you don't have that, you don't have this, you can't move this, you can't move that. And I didn't even think of myself that way. I just thought I was, you know, doing my thing. Like everybody, then I realized there's body types. I'm supposed to have something that moves and, you know, then from there it was, you know, even before then my mom saying, don't bend over like that. And, and then, you know, just sometimes men, you know, not feeling comfortable walking by a group of men and just try not to, you know, walk, walk by fast and not try to get them to say anything to me. All of those things like got programmed in my hips and I little by little, you know, just so, and I'm saying this openly, cause when you say, Oh, you're just moving in your body and I am, but because I'm moving in my body so freely, I can always tell where there's something missing. So before when I wasn't doing that, I couldn't tell. But now I know, okay, I'm moving freely, but my hips still need, my hips don't have, uh, they don't have complete freedom. You know, mm -hmm. my breasts have complete freedom. My pussy has freedom. My asshole has freedom. My legs have, but my hips, I don't give it complete freedom. And it's a subconscious thing. So seeing mm -hmm. you do that, it just, you know, evoked tears. And it was a little bit of a healing for me. And so I, I just thought, you know, I don't know if you have something very specific about that, but I would definitely consider, you know, uh, looking into that course for those reasons, because mm -hmm. I'm enjoying my life and amazing things are happening now. So just to open up more space and freedom within my hips, I know would just, you know, intensify everything. Mm. Thank you for, for expressing that. Yeah. I, I think that something else I share about, I call it untaming your wild hips. Because I think our hips, you know, I know our hips are just nature and they have been tamed. And I think to bring it into also what you shared, you know, I, I, I grew up in Catholic school for kindergarten through high school, going to Catholic school where in high school it was only women. Mm -hmm. And I did have that experience of, you know, uh, even though it was all women, I didn't consider it a safe space, especially for sexuality and sensuality, you know, as a Catholic institution. Um, but it did come to finding the comfort and the process of just owning owning my hips as nature. And it happened inside out. It happened outside in as well, you know, being a performer all these years. And, and then taking that performance to um, when I worked as a stripper and when I worked as a samba dancer, when I worked as a belly dancer, allowing myself to still feel in my body, to still feel into my pussy and enjoy the movement, whoever was taking me in and allowing them, giving, you know, having the agency and saying that I am okay expressing myself sexually and being seen doing that. And, you know, like you, I mean, it's, it's been a process, you know, it's been a process, but I think it has been such a, um, has delivered so much fruit, <laughs> having, having set that intention for freedom of my hips and following through, it has been so liberating and, and delicious. And, and also, you know, our root and our sacral chakra is there. And so it's like, this feeling of safety and this feeling of nervous system relaxing when we really do ground into this space. Um, and yeah, I don't know if that answers your question or if that was really a question, have, but you have a, a, a seminar or workshop that focuses on that specifically. Well, in my, um, in my membership, we do um, each month is devoted to a different theme. But oh, also in, I saw that you had your membership. Yeah, yeah, but and in and in even within each theme, 
each month we're doing a, a deep movement practice and that will always for me involve rooting into the hips so even if we're talking about like the first month is arousing the sacred erotic we're still seeing what does that mean in our physical bodies like what does that mean in our embodiment and in our hips and so we can talk more about that after too but i'm so glad that you're interested and and, and intrigued to to go on to unlock that part of yourself you know and so it's you it's know beautiful. i've gotten a long way because i've done some work but i'm at a Absolutely. new ascent. I'm, i ascend to a new level of of uh manifestation then there's always another level of self-judgment and fear that releases. It's not dramatic like it used to be back in the day, you know, because I, mm. I, I'm living my life focused on what I want, but it doesn't mean there's still some things locked in me. It doesn't mean that there still aren't some things still locked in me that are going to release when it get, when I get to a level where everything's good, I'm going to be moving my hips a lot and everything's great. There's no room for all that. Let that go. That happened before mm. I went on tour. There was a, I, I was at a, um, my, before my tour started, I was initiated as a sex goddess and a high priestess. And while I was there, the sisters were doing a dance and, and they were all like in two pieces and we we're supposed to get on the floor and roll around and kick our legs up and, and then get up and then take off one of our pieces because most of everybody had a, you know, a bra underneath their t-shirt or, you know, something that they could take off. I had on bra and panties and a dress and my inner guidance told me to wear that when I was thinking, I don't usually wear panties or anything under this dress. That's kind of weird. I wonder why I'm, and then when I, I was like, oh shit, we're getting ready to do a dance. I was like, oh shit, I don't want to dance in front of these women. I don't want to, and I was acting silly and trying to act like I was, you know, I'm too, I can't do it. And the, the, the instructor was like, no, you're going to get up here and you're going to dance like you're all of us. And so when I got up and I was fine, it was my turn to get up and I pulled the dress up over my head because that's all I had to take off. And then all I had was my bra and panties. All the sisters went, <gasps> Oh, you know, like they all breathed in at the same time. I'm like, oh, that looks so beautiful. Oh, goodness, don't cry. Okay. Mm. Tears so, are welcome. If they're welcome for you, they're welcome for me. I just remember how I felt at that time. I was like, man, it's been since I was like 12 or 11 where I was dancing around women and they just all said something positive. Even as an mm. adult, if I was at a dance, if I was at a wedding, you know, the sisters that were a little heavier, like, get out of here with that skinny booty and everything. And I'm like, uh, my booty's not skinny. I could say, get out of here with your big fat ass. But I didn't say that, you know, I would be angry because I was like, why are these sisters? I always tell that sister how beautiful she is, how beautiful her body is. And then in front of everyone, she has to take like a, a little jab. And I, I would get upset because I'm a lover, not a fighter. And I couldn't get the comeback. Like, it, it wouldn't even feel right for me to say that because I love fat asses. So it wouldn't even be an insult, you know, to me, I think they're beautiful. So it was like, I had to come to grips with that. But with all the sisters giving me that love, and then I was moving my body and all of that demonstration, it was like medicine, it was like healing, not just the dancing, moving my hips, but the sisters giving me love, like they sent all that love to my hips. And one of the sisters was like, I heard it, I literally my hips cracked, they went, <laughs> and one sister was like, I heard that. I thought that was my imagination. I was like, I don't even know. I was standing still and it just popped open. Like mm -hmm. it was so amazing. So anyway, I just think that the, the, the journey of getting into your body and learning how to live in it and love it and, and, you know, be in that space is that's what the whole life is about. Like to me, mm -hmm. if I'm not doing that, I, I would have just been wasting my life, you know, because mm -hmm. it's like, what, 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 even if I was healing children or whatever, it's like, if I'm not comfortable in my own body, what is this for? So that that's where I'm focused at right now. And, uh, mm. and, and I just want to, you know, again, tell you all the great things you were saying that you see in me, I'm literally a mirror. And so you're like, Oh, my God, look at her. She's so beautiful. She's like, Oh, oh that's me. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's literally you. Mm. And even advanced in, in other areas that that's not my that's not my mission. So you're way advanced in some areas. So just, you know, and I know you own it, but just, you know, like I'm doing what the sisters did to me, just shining that love on you and, and, mm. and letting you know that that's not just a compliment. You're doing it, you know, you're mm. changing the world. If you stop today and you never did anything else, everything you did this far is still going out and it's going to come back to you in blessings, abundant mm. blessings. Mm. It's so beautiful to receive.
and I and I reflect it back to you everything year that you also are advanced in areas that I'm not and that's why we we connect with each other and that's why we continue to show up and learn there's never going to be a day where we are just complete levitating off the floor you know maybe I don't know maybe there will be but <laughs> I think that we're constantly on a path of growth and, and, and there's always going to be, like you said, when you liberate something, there's another little thing and then you go towards that. And then it's just constantly following those inklings and intuitions towards healing. And, and, and yeah, it's, it's so beautiful. And so, I mean, we've, we've talked about, so, this has been such an amazing, beautiful conversation. Uh, I, I did want to touch a little bit on your, orgasmic manifestation approach um yeah i I don't do you still feel like you if you were open to it i could go through the five steps um because it doesn't take that much time to do that and just walk everyone through the steps and what they are and how to do them and if you're comfortable with it on your platform i can even you know demonstrate without showing anything um and being Mm. in the now moment um it depends on what you feel comfortable with Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm very comfortable with that. If that feels in alignment for you. Okay. So the, the first step of orgasmic gratitude meditation is deciding what you want and deciding what you want from your bliss, not from lack and not from the way things are right now. It doesn't have to make sense. Just your pure desire, what you want. Um, you can make it something that you're stressed out about, maybe that you're worried about and you want to have a solution for but you know, it can be as big as your dreams coming true, whatever that looks like. Once you know what that is and you know what you want, you're going to center in yourself and then you're going to focus on your breath. I know breath is a big part of, you know, connecting with the body when you, you know, talk to your audience. So it's not going to be new, but what you're doing when you're breathing in is you're imagining love and light. Now you can expand and evolve into whatever you want with this practice. But if you want me to guide you, I'm going to tell you how I do it, and I suggest you do it this way so I can help you if you're not getting results or, or there's a little bit of a you know, challenge along the way. Mm. But you're going to breathe in love and light, and when you're breathing in that love and light, you're going to send it to the place where you feel that you need it the most. If it's, in, if it's your thoughts, if it's your body, if it's your emotions, in between your inhalation, inhalation and your exhalation, you're just going to hold your breath long enough to ask yourself, how would I feel right now if I was breathing in and out and I already had what I want? How would I allow myself to feel? And then if you notice that I'm getting monkey brain, I'm remember, oh shoot, I forgot to call that person. Or maybe I need to click over to another page and see what else is going on. Or, you know, or whatever, if your brain starts going different places and, oh, I forgot to unplug my flat iron. Or, you know, you start thinking, you know, just kind of monkey brain thoughts. That's giving you a sign of what happens that blocks you from that thing that you want in your regular life. It's just showing up like that. Now, if you you start feeling worry, doubt, fear, anxiety, resentment, jealousy, anything that comes out in emotions or memories or thoughts, that's letting you know, okay, yeah, that's, that's holding me back. Yeah, I could. So what you do is whatever you're feeling, even if it's physical pain, You just stretch into that pain and send the love and light, not to the pain. You're releasing the pain through your exhalation, through your mouth. And then the the inhalation, the love and light's going to go to the space that that was occupying. So if you're, if worried, fear and doubt were occupying your thoughts, now love and light are occupying your thoughts. It's literally making you a vibrational match for everything that you said you wanted. So Mm -hmm. when you're going, when we're going into the breath, Knowing what we want, let's do that. Think about what you want. Inhale through your nose. Let your your stomach distend and your lungs fill to capacity and just think about what you want. I'm thinking, I want my Facebook page back. They deleted it in August and I would be so happy. How would I be right now? How would I breathe? There's a part of me that said, forget about it. It's been since August. It's not going to happen. And that's that's what I released out through my breath in my mouth. Mm. 
So this morning, I remember seeing a post where someone said, it's not, it, something like this it doesn't happen every day, where they were, they, it said that their uh, Instagram page or Facebook page, some page was deleted, and that they made a mistake, please let them know how they're enjoying their Facebook journey. And the person said, you don't have this happen every day. They take down pages left and right. But look at this. I got my page back. I just saw that this morning. So as soon as I released that thought through my breath and I took in the second breath and then the third breath, that thought came in my head. I wasn't even thinking about that. And so now I feel even more in alignment. I feel like, yeah, yeah, you could, you could see that happening. That could happen to you. You could have your page back. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then I, I'm breathing. I feel like I'm the woman that has her page on Facebook back. So how would I get into my senses? Because your thoughts are up here. What you feel that's real, that's really real, that connects you in the now moment has everything to do with your senses. What you smell, what you listen to, what you taste, what you, I said what you can listen to, what you see and what you feel. So in this now moment, I'm feeling there's a ceiling fan blowing and I'm feeling it blowing on the back of my shoulder. I'm seeing the beautiful color of your hair and the pussy power necklace contrast with the black jacket. Um, what am I listening to? I'm listening to the rain outside the window. Mm -hmm. So in the now moment, I'm in the space engaging all these senses and I'm the woman who already has her Facebook page back. That feels wonderful. I, that can, that's believable. Mm. Yeah. So in the space where I'm feeling like I'm the woman who's breathing, who's feeling, who's listening to, I'm everything. I'm that woman that has it. Then I incorporate sexual energy. That's natural for me because sexual, sexual energy is my fuel. So I believe that your sex, I'm sex, we are our parents physical manifestation of their sexual expression. So just us being here right now and breathing is being sexual. So if you decide, ah, I don't know if I can do that, that feels weird, I don't know if it works, or I don't know if God likes that, you don't have to do that part. You can just be a, a witness of this part and know that you are sex and you're being sexual and that is enough. But for me, I like to use masturbation because I can focus on the sensations of my own body without pleasuring my mate and losing that, that focus, you know, because I'm worried about their or concerned about their pleasure. So, okay. Okay. So I'm, I'm in the space right now and I'm telling myself that I am the woman that has everything that I want. I have that page. I have all the happiness connected to it. And I'm also still connecting with my senses. So, I feel the warmth of my vagina. I feel that I'm, I'm here in the now moment with all the senses that I've already engaged. And as I get more and more aroused, it's usually happening because I'm feeling like I already have what I want. I already have what I want. It's already there. I'm just in, the, okay, but what if it doesn't happen? Okay, breathe that out. It might happen further down the road where you have to still release negative thoughts, you know, through your mouth when you exhale. But the more and more real it becomes as I'm, you know, massaging my clit or whatever it is that I'm doing. And some people are like, how do I, how do I get aroused thinking about my goals? Like, how do I get off by looking at my vision board? It's like, no, you're not doing that. You're telling yourself, I want to masturbate right now. But since I'm going to, what if I told myself everything on the vision board is already complete? It's already done. I'm going to really take that vision board down because I don't need it anymore. How would I get off right now? How would I get into the sensations? <laughs> sorry mm, no apologies <laughs> so I can already tell this is not going to happen within this time period because you know we're new friends and I you know I need to warm up to you you've never masturbated before so I don't want to take up all mm. your time <laughs> <laughs> but in, in, in alignment with you know the the engaging all the senses. I don't know if you teach this too, but I say, if you conjured up all that pleasure, taste it. Mm. Because that, that is your connection to your health. It's the connection to your pleasure. And it, to me, it helps women start conditioning. My mouth is a part of my pussy pleasure because mm. there's the tissues are similar. The, the way that it's structured is similar. And in fact, sometimes when you are you know, uh, receiving oral pleasure, your pussy responds. 
sometimes when you're getting all the pleasure in your pussy, your tongue can't be controlled. You need to suck on something. It, they're, they're deeply connected. And that, that mm -hmm. connection helps women become more awake and alive in their body so that they're more the initiator of oral pleasure and not hoping that the guy just kind of like, oh, I hope he doesn't ask me to do it. <laughs> you know, it helps mm -hmm. you become more synergistic with your, with your body. Your mouth and your pussy are, you know, energetically connected. So exploring that just brings more pleasure for you. Mm. And then the fifth stage of orgasmic gratitude is you, you are that woman now. You created the life already. There's nothing else to do. So now wash your hands, put your mask on, and go out in the world and be that new person. You created it. You got mm. your page back. So how would you put gas in your car if you got your page back? You know, how would you pay for it? How would you swipe your card? How would you get back in the car? Like literally, you're just telling yourself, I have it. And that's the only thing that you're doing. You're, you already have it, nothing else. You don't have to visualize. You don't have to go to Facebook and try to cut it out and put it on your vision board. You just know you have it. And that's with anything. I'm using Facebook page as an example. Mm. Wow. Thank you for walking us through that and for your demonstration and for your courage and commitment to letting us into your practice and being so generous with that with yourself with your spirit really I, so deeply it grateful feels to, it feels good to be sexual in a in a space where there's learning happening it feels natural for me um mm. and and uh and it feels like the the things that I wish and when I didn't I did I just recently learned how to masturbate like maybe 15 years ago um and I used to want to be able to ask a sister like you know can I see how you do your thing because on porn they they're not it's not, I can't really see anything and I don't know and my butt and I don't know how to work mine and I didn't know all those years I was trapped in embarrassment because I didn't know how to masturbate because God said it was bad and my mother said it was bad and now I get to share and teach and show like the thing I desperately needed back then I am for mm -hmm. other people, you know, it's so amazing. You never, I promise you men and women, or however you identify, don't judge the rest of your sexual future based on how things are right now. Don't ever do mm -hmm. that. <laughs> you were, when I was homeless living in my car, you know, in a thunderstorm having to pee, but I can't get out of my car and all the horrible things I had to live through. My sex, got, my sex goddess journey was already happening. I just didn't mm -hmm. know it. I was at the very, very, very beginning stages of it. You know, so you don't know what stage you're at, but whatever you truly want is already happening. You just got to get engaged with it more with your thoughts and with your body. Mm. Oh, someone said they gave their boyfriend a, a BJ with a heart full of gratitude yesterday. He felt over what very overwhelmed even after he came i didn't leave it didn't leave would mm -hmm. love to hear your insight on that if it happens often to you with others yes i would love to i, I don't want to take up you know i know we please kind of like please if you feel comfortable i don't want to take up your sure. time uh, so you're, you you're you giving your your love a bj with a heart full of gratitude I know it might sound weird, but I just want to say thank you so much, sister, for doing that. I just think it's so wonderful that you made it all about him and you're teaching him how to receive. You teaching him how to receive where he doesn't have to do anything. And whether you know, knew this or not, it's not even about whether or not he's erect. It doesn't matter if he has an orgasm. That's not the reason why you're doing it. You're just doing it because you want the pleasure of a beautiful penis in your mouth. And you, it's, it's the penis that belongs to the man you love. So he just gets to enjoy the pleasure of you wanting to play with his penis, you know, but in, a, in an erotic way, in a central way, in an intimate way. And it's very healing for him. So for a man, usually uh, their orientation to receiving oral pleasure comes from all kind of toxic stuff that boys say and things they saw in porn. And, and so, the, and even when they grow up, women are still trying to be like the porn star and do it like they saw it in porn. Like porn sets the stage of how everybody sex dick, <laughs> you know, most people sex dick, you know, either the man, even if a woman doesn't do it the way she sees it on TV, the man tries to make her do what he's, you know, what he sees a, a man getting on television or in the videos. So having a woman step up and give him the experience that he's never had before that alone 
will ignite a whole different type of orgasm. You know, I don't know if you've had sex after healing or sex after being connected with someone that you can truly trust and you know loves you and accepts you and will never hurt you. That's some good sex <laughs> because you're not afraid. You're not holding, you're not gripping, you're not worried. You're not in your head about anything. So you gave that to him. And I just say thank you because I'm an earth mama and I see him as my son. And I'm saying thank you. That's a sexy mama. Thank you for sucking his dick the way that you did. He deserves it. And, and you said that it didn't leave. You don't want it to leave. And it's not your job to keep sucking it that way, to keep it going. It's your job to keep being the feminine energy that, that's represented by that. You know, It's not just about you giving him oral pleasure. It's about you being that feminine expression, whether you're giving oral pleasure or not. And that helps him know, how do I get back into that? What, where, what energy was I in when she naturally gave that to me? And you guys helping each other understand what, I know it wasn't just a workshop. It had to be something that in him that made you want to try to do it in the workshop, from the workshop. So if, it, if you could tell him, like, these are the things that I really appreciate about you. This is what made me really want to have your dick in, in my mouth and to give you this experience. So then he knows, oh, that's what it is. Because <laughs> every guy wants to know that combination. Trust me. They're like, now what do I got to do? Okay, flowers on Tuesday, wash the dishes on Thursday, iron the sheets on Friday. It's like they will do whatever because of how, not because they're disgusting pigs that just want their dick sucked. That's what my grandmother taught. So to me, it was like, yeah, of course you'll do anything. You just want me to suck your dick, you know? And, and I got good skills. So yeah, you're going to bug me about it all the time. Just chill out, you know? But that's not right. It's like, no, it's the one time that they feel adored and they have to do less work, <laughs> you know? That, that's, a, that's a big thing. It takes work to have sex. And, you know, and although it's a lot of pleasure, we're allowing men to be in a space where they don't have to always be the person who's penetrating or projecting or, you know, providing all those things make men feel like they have to perform to receive love or they have to perform to deserve. And that's not, I don't think that that's healthy. I, I, I don't think any human has to feel like they got to jump through hoops to feel adored, especially if they have a lover who's already committed to them. Yes, men deserve to be kissed upon, especially men like that. Exactly. Mm. Oh, okay. It's so much healing done. Oh, I can get into that. I'm what exactly caused? Oh, sorry. Oh, right now. I can't get into that right now. What exactly caused you to do it? Uh, Okay. All right. Sorry. I'm not the best at reading live because I can, I can't see all the words. Once it gets on my skin, it's kind of faded. Uh, yes, it does take work to create such safe space for both or, uh, more people. Exactly. And the work is, mm -hmm. you know, the work is just that that's the lack of a better word, you know, work. Like I said, it's not my favorite word to use, but you know, there's things that you have to do, you know, there's things that you got to be committed to doing to make that happen and, and think and more than doing you've got to, you got to make a commitment to be that person. Like you've got to make a commitment to be the woman who enjoys oral pleasure, not enjoys doing it to him. <laughs> you enjoy giving oral pleasure. It's for your enjoyment. You've got to show up to be that woman. If you're going to give a BJ with a heart full of gratitude, if it's like, Oh, I took this workshop. Let me see if I can do this right. That's not a BJ with a heart full of gratitude. It's literally whatever you decide to do with your mouth, on his penis, that's his pleasure. And all he does is receive. Mm. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. This conversation has been so next level. I'm so grateful for you taking all this time to share your magic with us. Thank you for participating and sharing Are that you, you had. In... What's that? Are you in Hawaii? No, I'm in, uh, I'm in Topanga outside LA. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why I thought some of your videos. That I was out. there. I was there for oh. four months and now yeah. I'm on the other side back I'll, home here. I usually go there. Well, before 2020, I was there like two or three times a month or two, wow. two or three times a year and okay. then I was there for a month and I'll, I'm going to start that again in August. So I don't oh, know if you're going back to let you know I'll be there in August. Oh, that's so good to know. Thank you for sharing that. I'm I, sure we're going to align somewhere in the world. Theater. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to meet you in person. I, I'm just, 
Ah, oh, the death show that we went to today. Thank you for going there and taking us there with you and for being willing to share so much, so much magic. We're so Will grateful. You, I'm so grateful. Are you willing to go deep with me on my platform and share your sexy journey? I would love to. I Wonderful. would love to. Let's I'd be up. honored. How do you keep your hair so vibrant? With yeah, so this actually is a filter huh? right now. It's a filter, yeah, on the, here on Instagram. My hair is actually pink. It's just not as pink as it appears right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Because I was like, it's but the so filter hard. Is so I used fun. to be a hairdresser a long time ago. So I know the pigments that stay in hair. And I'm like, that is really vibrant. Like, yeah, so just got that done. And how do you keep it looking? <laughs> yeah, no, when I go on Instagram, my Instagram hair is much more vibrant than the in real life. But I love it. I love the pink. It's so pink. <laughs> I like the Instagram filters, but some of the ones that I like what it does with my hair, it changes up my face a little bit. Yeah. And then when I change the filter back, I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm like, I'm not fucking yeah, with the gives filters. Me freckles. I don't have freckles, but, but yeah, with it, the hair it, comes it, freckles for some reason. Yeah. I'm like, I, I don't want to get, you know, into that kind of, not that other women will have that problem, but I'm like, I was literally buying into Oh, look at me. I look glamorous like a movie star. And then I look like myself. I'm like, yeah, yeah, let me well, just stay you, with myself. You look glamorous like a movie star at all times. So Thank just you. to make no, sure you know level. that. I'll send you a picture of another level. <laughs> it looks almost like a cartoon character. And I, I was thinking that I looked like that. And then when I took the filter off, I'm like, I do not look like that. So I need to stay closer <laughs> to how I look. <laughs> thank you, Alyssa. Uh, well, thank you so much, Parrish. Sending you so much love. Thank you for everybody who joined us for this conversation. Throw the hearts up. Make feel feel the love. <laughs> I'm grateful that you guys are here. You all were here. And I'll be sharing this episode on Pussy Empowered Podcast. I'll be putting this on my feed too, but it'll also come out as an episode okay. on the podcast in the, the near future. And I'm so grateful for you all here. And to know, um, yes, I will save it and put it on my feed so you can watch from the beginning. And so, you know, um, oh, is there anything that, anything, Paris, that you want to promote that you're working on I, or I sharing right now? That I would love for people to connect with me. If you have questions about orgasmic gratitude meditation, you can email me at sexyspirittv at gmail.com and tell me where you are in your journey of uh, sex transmutation. Um, and then I'll, I'll know where to direct you. I too am, uh, I already have a membership, but I've kind of, uh, what is it? I've, uh, it's gone through some transitions after I recognize what I truly enjoy sharing. So um, I'll have my membership site, Sexy Spirit TV, uh, launching next month. But uh, for now, you can visit my website, parishblair.com. You can stay connected with me on Sexy Spirit TV here on Instagram. And yeah, if you have any questions, I'm here for you. I'm your big sexy sister. And... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody, the insect dick. Yay! Yay! <laughs> That's the best ending ever. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, and I'll share that 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 my membership is opening next month, and we're going to be talking about arousing the sacred erotic. So if that's something that you're called to, I'm going you know to where to find me now. Oh, I thought you were talking to me. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm talking. Your... I'm talking outwards. Uh, okay, but I'm into the. But also, yeah, I'm, I'm interested. Glad... Check it out. Yeah, let's talk about it. We'll chat in the DMs. Okay. And we'll go down in the DMs. All right. All right.